Hi friends, Teacher Alice here from Mountain School at my garden. Some of you will remember that in January we made sauerkraut in our classroom and one of the best parts about it was that we got to wear our safety glasses and use hammers and hammer the cabbage. Remember we hammered the cabbage in the kitchen? Well, your sauerkraut that you made in our threes class is done and it's ready to eat. In fact, we have been eating it at our house. This is a potato pancake that I made today with mashed potatoes and we're eating it with the sauerkraut. Now, Threes, you made your sauerkraut out of purple cabbage. I don't have any purple cabbage growing in my garden, but I do have this picture on this seed bag of purple cabbage. Do you remember the lines in the cabbage? Remember we drew purple lines of our bodies just like those squiggly lines. So at our house, we made, we made some more sauerkraut. Can you tell me why this sauerkraut is different than this sauerkraut? If you said that it's different colors, you were right, because this is made of green cabbage and this is made of purple. So there's another thing that we get to see in this green cabbage. Remember we've been putting um, magic coins in water and we're watching the carbon dioxide bubble out? Well, if we can zoom in here, we can see some bubbles in this sauerkraut because it's also making carbon dioxide. And if I tap it, can you see the bubbles rising? There's some here. <coughs> Pretty exciting. That means our sauerkraut here at Teacher Alice's house is cooking. All right, and this is the cab, what a head of cabbage looks like that we used for this green sauerkraut. Now, I have some of this green cabbage growing in my garden, so we're going to walk over and take a look at it. Here we go. These are heads of green cabbage, and you can see that they have similar shapes. So if you can zoom in, Seth, and show my friends how the leaves of the, the head of cabbage from the grocery store look, this is how they grow when they're in the field. And this cabbage is very hard because all the leaves are tight together. So these cabbages, this one's a little soft, but this one is really hard too. You can tell it's growing lots of leaves in there and pretty soon it will be round just like this. Now, today we're going to be reading a very old fashioned book. So when I do the reading of the book, one of the things I like to tell people, because it's kind of a long book, but it's very special, is that if you are tired of looking at the pictures because there's not enough pictures or they're not bright enough, I suggest that you close your eyes and listen. Because when we close our eyes and listen, then our imagination makes the story for us in our head. All right, I'll see you at the book. The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank, 
underneath the root of a very big fir tree. We have lots of fir trees at Mountain School. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I am going out. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brine bread and five currant buns. Flopsy and Mopsy and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. Those blackberries look like the blackberries we see at the creek. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. First, he ate some lettuces and some French beans, and then he ate some radishes. Look at those red radishes. And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But round the end of a cucumber frame, whom should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop! Thief! Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes amongst the cabbages and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster, so that I think he might have got away altogether if he had not unfortunately run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons and quite new. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears. But his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop upon the top of Peter. But Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him. and rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. Do we use cans like this at mountain school? It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. So he began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently, Peter sneezed. Achoo! Mr. McGregor was after him in no time and tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. Now, these plants are called pelargoniums. They are ornamental geraniums. We might have some of these in the mountain school garden, too. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp with sitting in the can. After a time, he began to wander about, going, Lippity lippity, not very fast, and looking all around. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, 
carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head at him, and Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he gave, became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still. But now and then, the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, like Benjamin, little Benjamin Bunny. He went back towards the tool shed. But suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe, scritch, scratch, scratch, scritch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes. But presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned towards Peter, and beyond him was... <gasps> the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Look at that, Mr. McGregor has upcycled all the clothes that Peter left behind. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him till he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand of the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. A fortnight means one month. Oh, end of our story. Thanks for listening, friends. To the Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. Hello, friends. I hope you enjoyed that book. And I hope that you saw the cabbages in Mr. McGregor's garden, just like I have cabbages in my garden. Now, there were some things about the garden of Mr. McGregor that reminded me very much of the Mountain School garden. So when you get off the phone, you can talk to people in your house, like your family, and you can say, gee, we have a fence just like that. We have a gate just like that at our mountain school garden. I wonder if I could squeeze under it. Or you could say, hey, do you remember that we use watering cans at the mountain school garden? And Peter Rabbit hides in a watering can in the story. So find things in this story to talk to your family about that remind you of school. I also noticed that there were things in the story that reminded me of our creek. So for instance, the little bunnies, his brothers and sisters, they eat blackberries that they gather at the creek. Who else do we know that gathers blackberries at the creek? Ah, our mountain school friends, you guessed it. Well, thanks for joining me for Cabbage Talk today. I'm really glad that you got to see my garden. It's time for us to say goodbye so today our whoopsies will be for <gasps> Solve, 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 Whoopsie! And Gavin, 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 Whoopsie! And Amelia, 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 Whoopsie! And Emmy, 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 Whoopsie! Goodbye, it's been a nice day. Goodbye, it's time to say goodbye. 
I'll see you next visit when we log back into our mountain, our nursery time.